Casing the Cover is a bi-monthly podcast series hosted by Mary and Jen. That's me. In our day-to-day experiences, Mary and I happen across numerous crappy covers, atrocious authors, and sad, sad titles. We spend a healthy amount of time decoding how cover designs can be humorously contrary to the story within or used to lure readers based on demographic or current trends. Should you judge a book by the cover? Join Mary and Jen on the case to find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Case in the Cover, the podcast where we promote our friends. Hi, Amelie. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it just like rips the beginning right out there. You're like, no, we have our second interview with a very popular and professional author. <laughs> yes. And she's also our friend. <laughs> Aren't we cool? <laughs> You are cool if you have me for a friend. This is so. There's that. This is true. So we are joined this week by Amelie Jerome. She is a local author. And uh, how many books have you have you published altogether? Currently, six. I have two more novellas coming out this year, and another full length novel coming out in uh, April. When this airs. Yes. When this airs, be right around. We're recording in advance, but look for it. Look for it. Um, go ahead, plug, plug. Tell us some stuff about your books. Um, okay, I have a fantasy series of novellas that are classic sword and sorcery fantasy. Evil sorcerers, evil kings, powerful people who stand up to them and take back their land. Um, the series spans kind of the life of the kingdom. And so they're, they're each standalone, but they all tie together in the story. Oh, um, that's good. So, you, yeah, you can read them out of order. Good, because it'll... it shows it to me out of order. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, they, they can be read out of order. So there are some crossover characters and some crossover plot lines that all tie in together at the end. I am currently in the proofing stage of the last book, and I'm waiting for a cover on book six. And so there's seven in all. And... So those will be out later this year. Uh, my first full-length novel is called *The Breeding*. It's a supernatural, paranormal, which which we may have reviewed last week. We reviewed it. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> so if you listened last week, that's the story. Now I'm not terrified at all. All nice things. All <laughs> nice things. Um, and then the one I have coming out in April is called *Swimmer*. And it is a fairy tale inspired, fairy tale inspired contemporary fantasy. Very good, very good. But not it's a mermaid urban, story. Yes, but not urban fantasy. No, apparently that's a different thing. I had to figure that out. It can't be urban fantasy if it's not in the city. Exactly. I mean, kind of it's in the city because half of it takes place in Miami. But oh. that's a city, Jen. It's a city. I didn't know that. I you didn't know Miami's a city. <laughs> no, I didn't. This is not going well for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's only partially underwater. The main character is the I knew about. So. I knew about the, the underwater stuff. You didn't know about the Miami? I didn't know about the Miami. Does the mermaid go clubbing? <gasps> no. Not in this story. Oh. <laughs> I guess what you're referencing. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, God, no. That, that episode's not going on for a while. We're not talking about that one. <laughs> we will have clubbing mermaids. Oh wait, that was that sounded bad too. <laughs> it would be clubbing mermaids. That's why they don't exist anymore. <laughs> mermaids are extinct because of Jen. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> See, this is a super professional podcast. Welcome. welcome. Oh, we're Thanks. so professional. We just did the professional part, and now we're harassing for like 20 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> All right, like so I, like I like it. Yes, um, we obviously you've, you've listened to our podcast, right? No, right? I'm a terrible friend. <gasps> it's okay. Um, we wait, wait. Okay, now stop. I she's did, gonna cut I, that part out, and she's gonna go. Duh. Yeah, wow. of course. I always listen to our podcast all, all the of time. the episodes. I'm pulling our guest under duress here. <laughs> we we have talked. I'm get the rubber chicken. <laughs> Casing the cover, we of course talk about book covers. So, yes. our interest when we speak to authors is kind of the process of publishing for them and also the process of covers and how much input they have in that. And if they have all of the input, how they go about getting their covers made and designed, etc. Would you like to share any of that with us? Sure. 
Especially on the breeding, because we reviewed that one. Yes. Okay. The, the <laughs> breeding... Well, here, here's my background. My skill in graphic design is very nearly to my level of skill in underwater basket weaving. So I hire that out. Yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> All of my underwater basket weaving gets hired out, as does my book cover design. <laughs> I to have mermaids? Some occasionally. But the nice ones, not the evil ones. They're all nice. No, they're not. They're all evil. Jen clubbed all the evil ones. <laughs> the evil ones. I'm friends with the good ones. I, I torture my daughter by telling her mermaids are evil. Mm-hmm. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Okay. It's hilarious. But I have one that's not evil. Okay, fair. Okay. The one. The one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I, I, the, my cover designer for the Amulet Saga, which is my fantasy series, and the breeding is the same artist okay and he's somebody that i know he's done book covers for a lot of other authors that i know and he's somebody that i've met at conferences and so we already had a previous relationship professional (laughs) (laughs) professional (laughs) it sounds weird to say that um not like clubbing mermaids not like clubbing mermaids that's a very personal relationship (laughs) um so we, we already had a professional relationship, and so uh, so I hired him to do my amulet saga, and um, what what happened with that was I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted, um, and I talked to my sister who's an artist, and I sent her a description from the first book of what the amulet looked like, and my description in the book is super super bare bones, and so my sister took the description and painted basically what the design is the triangular amethyst with the gold casing and so i sent her picture to my cover artist and he made it into the graphic that he used on the book cover he did digital art yeah yes yeah so so it was a my sister's concept art and his graphic art that kind of combined to make the cover and then with the series it's all basically the same color cover but different colors so yeah this is cool because it just you, you took the idea of you got to make the whole set match and mm-hmm. just went and it's a rainbow <laughs> well and, and part of the thing with that was like a budget issue it was yeah. you know and i talked to my cover designer about this after the first book um and basically because they're novellas they're not selling like hotcakes which is also ironic because the hotcakes aren't moving either <laughs> But they're, they're not going to be my best sellers, mm-hmm. just because of what they are. They're novella-length fantasy. I so know, that's kind of a thing right now. We just, is it? Yeah, we reviewed the... Well, in that the case, drama. go buy it. Well, it's really the, good. The thing about novellas is novellas right now are kind of a thing where established authors, it's a way for them to so publish and sell series. another thing. Yeah. Well, so, like, your Pattersons, and the last one we read was Jillian, Jillian Flynn, right? Mm-hmm. Where there's these authors who have hit it really big... And then they're also kind of going, well, in between my books, here's a novella, here's a novella, buy my novella. Yeah, but and see, hers was actually a short story published in something else. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of those. You gotta go not call them novellas, you gotta call them bookshots. Bookshots. Book that's, that's what Patterson does. He calls them bookshots. See, I can roll with that. See? So, All right, so my, get the... my bookshot series. <laughs> you are getting so drunk on this series. No, actually, <laughs> she totally took shot the other way. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's the amulet. Every way. time you see the amulet, <laughs> take, take a, a shot. shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe you could call them like book charms or something because it's like an amulet, the dependence. I don't know. I'm the, trying here, man. The, the other thing that I'm not good at is marketing. So. <laughs> I don't know. These are, these look really good though. I like this. I and I like that they're. So what's the reading age on these? Uh, young adult and up. Okay. There's there's not. It's pretty clean. I have let my 16 year old read the first one so far. Um, I my 13 year old is totally uninterested, and my 11 year old would read it, but she. I don't really feel comfortable with her reading it yet, just because there's some references to sex. And so like PG-13. Yeah, PG-13. Yeah. I think this fits really well with that, that crowd. Can you see it from over there? Mm-hmm. Like, there, I think that that's the stuff. Plus, I'm just going to like segue this in here. 
one of the most popular things right now in kids' graphic novels is an amulet series. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's late. Mine's prettier. Yours is well, prettier. And also yours is, theirs is a graphic. So they're, the cover of those has the characters right from the graphic novel yeah. on them. They look very cartoony mm -hmm. because it's a graphic novel series. It's not, whereas your covers kind of fit more of that YA fantasy. They look very right. much like that kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, it's got the single iconic yes. image. Which is... Well, you know what they remind me of actually is the um, oh my god, it's gonna it's gonna drive me crazy because I cannot remember the series title. In their their kid series, they are uh, they're written by different authors. You know which ones I'm talking. Is it about. that Thirty Nine Clues? One? That oh. yes, they kind of remind me of in Thirty Nine Clues. They kind of do. Where you have the similar theme on all the colors, but covers, but they're all the different colors, and it's yeah. like you, those books are by a bunch of different authors. So part of it is even if it's by a different author. You know exactly what they look like. You can go find right. it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which those kind of give me that kind of. Vibe and I think a this bit. is like a really it's it's very bright. It's very eye catching. It's also I think it's a good way to, again, like you said, you know mm -hmm. it's the next one in the series. It's it's a smart thing to do. We learned this doing our Patterson episodes. There's there's nothing wrong with making your books look very similar because then people know yeah. that it's you. Right. And I think to segue into your other series, we both really loved that cover. Yeah, um, thank you. Of the breeding. We, I thought it was really... Okay, is it illustrated or is it a photograph? It's a photograph. It looks illustrated to me. Dad! Oh. He kind of blurred it, huh? He did? Did he show, like, make it artsy? Yeah, he he actually... Um, the, my cover designer is Kirk DuPont's... His company is Dog-Eared Design. So if you go look up Dog-Eared Design, he actually has... A video on his website where it shows the process that he goes through on not my book but he he took he uh, basically like time-lapse video him working on this other cover and it is insane the amount of detail he goes to Wow! so we'll link it we'll put it in the show notes yeah let well, him know that we're linking it yeah. I will. honestly I'll like i think that taking that extra little bit to make it look like an illustration i don't know about you guys but i feel like that's kind of a trope of fantasy covers that i've come to expect those really well illustrated fantasy covers and when i see people who just use like the photographs it it reads more like a trashy romance novel to me. <laughs> like, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like when you see really like these really popular when you see the Jim Butcher or when you see um, Martin doesn't do it because he puts like the emblems on the covers. They that's what they do for his books. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but like um, Sanderson, a lot of these authors they have illustrated covers, and that's part of why I really liked the breeding cover because it looks like an illustrated cover, and that like elevates it to me for like this is good fantasy. <laughs> so did you have to like did you choose the cover model? No. I, I sent him some ideas, like I went just, you know, Google Images and found some pictures that I thought looked like her, like mm -hmm. my main character, Jack. So I said, this is kind of what she looks like to me. Um, here's, you know, I gave him the synopsis. I actually gave him the whole book, but I don't think he read it. Um, I read it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, but then I, you know, I gave him some, you know, pictures of what I thought she looked like and this is actually a cover model that he works with a lot I've seen her on other covers she looks totally different but you know when I when you go through his catalog it's like oh that's the same the same model but he does a fantastic job of making each cover look unique you have to be looking for it so did he do oh. did he like pose her and like specifically uh -huh. yeah. for her cover that's yes. cool that's amazing and yeah. that's also why your cover looks higher end because he actually got a model to come pose for it and instead just of pull a stock stock model. photos hot and patrick guys we're sorry again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no he he does use stock photos <clears throat> sometimes i think but he also tr he tries to work with real models when he can that's cool yeah. so like did he change your hair color and stuff <clears throat> no oh he, okay I'm like, how far did he shop her? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up his website so you guys can see. Yes, that's sure. really cool. Yeah, see, I don't know if that's like cooler that there's an actual model out there that exists for your character, or if it's like, like, she's almost that person. You know, that's that's really cool. I had no idea. See, learn things. I know. That's why we have you here. 
Yes. And he did all the font. And the yeah, stuff he, like he, that. He, yeah. He, that is way so far outside my wheelhouse. That is not something I know how to do. What's a font? Oh, see, I don't like fonts. I am <laughs> I love fonts. And the font for the breeding, like, when I'm looking at it, I go, okay, this is noir detective, but also a little bit creepy. Yes. Like, yeah, I, I feel like you really encompassed what the, what the story is yeah. on the cover really well. With the font. Yes. With the font. <laughs> Also, with the focus. The font. The font it's is all amazing. about the font. Well, because we saw too on other things that we've talked about and other things the that we will talk font about. Font is in, completely inappropriate. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's like so, font brilliant. So the, that's this, a gorgeous cover. Isn't that beautiful? This one's coming out um, this spring, and it's a um, this called Dust. Is it? Is by Karis Swanson. Peter Pan. It's a Peter yeah, Pan. Yeah, it's totally. You can tell. Yeah. Yes. You're looking at it. You don't even have to. Oh, that's, that's cool. This Mega one's elephant. The the electrical menagerie, I believe. Electric menagerie. I don't remember. Anyway, I I know I know this author. Actually, I know most of these authors. I know her. That also but, looks um, like a photograph. Molly Reader. Like it's it's crazy how. Yeah. I don't know that one. These are all excellent cover designs. Yeah. See, this is more simplistic too. I like that he can do both. Like like you said, your ambulance series was done by him too, and you. You wouldn't know it looking at it. Like the right. style is so totally Right, he's different. very, very talented at taking and this is why I pay somebody that's not me to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but that doesn't I mean, even paying someone that's not you to do it doesn't always end up the way you want it to. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's true. That is really cool. Oh yeah. another mermaid book. There you go. And I actually did not hire him to do my mermaid book, <gasps> mainly because of budgetary concerns. Oh. Because as you can see from his exceptional work, he's not cheap. Yeah. So what is your approach then for doing the cover art for your mermaid book? Um, I found a website called 99designs, um, actually recommended <clears throat> to me by another author whose cover I liked. And I browsed through some of the top rated um, designers, found one whose style I thought matched, and then, well, I found a few and kind of just reached out to a handful of different designers and the one that I ended up going with I really felt like he did the best job of communicating with me mm. and you know taking my ideas and listening to what I was going for and working with the image I had in mind and he, he put in a lot of cool details and he was more affordable so <laughs> but I'm, I'm really really happy with his work so I'm excited to I will probably work with him again I see it's kind of like the key I'm looking, I'm looking at some of these titles, and I'm like, yeah, somebody got like some game going on with some of these designs. Did you see the C.S. Lewis one? No. It's not C.S. Lewis. It's an author who's... Look at that. Oh, it is Creator of Narnia. Okay. Yeah, well, no. it's probably a book, a book about him. Oh, it's a book yeah. about him. Because I was like, that's not... That's not a C.S. Lewis book, but it's a book no, about They're called okay. biographies. I know. <laughs> Man, you guys are ragging me tonight. I know what a Miami is. <laughs> <laughs> what were the words just came out of your mouth? She knows what a Miami is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, I, I thought you were mispronouncing biography. <laughs> <laughs> really mispronouncing it. It's a good thing you listen to these later because I'm pretty sure you're not hearing me sound like No. No. <laughs> this is low. I sometimes don't hear you on anything either. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ouch. <laughs> See how this goes, man? And I'm sitting way over in the corner today. I didn't get the prime location today. We're at a table. There's three across. There is no corner. It's a round <laughs> table. <laughs> it's not round. It's oval. It's okay. It's really but it oval. doesn't have corners. doesn't have corners. And there's wigs on it. <laughs> there are wigs on it. <laughs> Welcome to our super professional studio. Wow. <laughs> All right, this website like the rubber is chicken. Really, Get really the rubber slowly. chicken. You leave the rubber she, chicken alone. She keeps threatening us with the rubber chicken. I know, she's going to hit me with that. Oh, my gosh. All right, so you talked about details with, with the breeding. I'm totally going back to this one because it's the one we, we read and we talked about. Now we have you here to pick it apart. Sweet. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> details. All the, the details. details. So she's got, she's on the cover. Yes. And she's got her badge, so we know she's a cop. But right. she's in like a, a suit, so we know that she's got to be higher level than a beat cop, right? She's got a gun 
and she's got a sword. And I'm not spoiling this, but that sword really should have had a lot more airtime to be on the cover. <laughs> I'll talk to him about that in book two. <laughs> I'm like, there's a sword on the cover, but the sword doesn't get any airtime for quite a while. <laughs> was that a you decision or was that a him decision? Uh, that, I think it was a him decision. I, I don't honestly don't remember. Yeah. So we were wondering if that was also kind of like a, hey, hey, you urban fantasy people, you'll like this book. Hey, hey, you. Yeah. Because a sword. Is that? I, I, I think I think when we were originally talking <laughs> about it, I told them some of the details that were in it and some of the some of the elements. So I don't I don't so, remember if so you decided. I don't mind it, but I agree. Sure. I and get mad at that night. I'm not sword. mad at it. It just was like, oh, swords, cool, because you know, swords, cool. Yes. Swords, Speaking obviously me. swords. Yes, but like. I, so I expected it to get a lot more airtime. What'd you find out? I'm pretty sure that is the same model as Jane. Oh, she's very pretty. Yes, and she doesn't look Starting like her face, her face on the breeding cover, because she's kind of yeah. looking, looking away. She's very pretty. So I'm pretty sure that's the same cover model. I think it is. Oh my gosh. But she doesn't look at all like the same character. She's, what's what's so, the name of this book so we can... Journey's End by Renee Ryan. Journey's End by Renee Ryan. So that's, that's Avalu's model. She's very, very pretty. She looks kind of like um, Charisse Theron, but with like dark hair. She does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not a movie person, but I do like that. And also she's wearing the hat from Titanic. I don't think so. Uh, no. I think that's somebody else. See, now I want to know, like, which ones are her. But also it's kind of funny because, like, she's wearing, it's clearly a, a period yeah, drama yes. sort of story. She's wearing the high <laughs> collar and the ruffles and all that stuff. So to go from her suit. Her cop suit <laughs> to the ruffles. It's called modeling, Jen. I know, but it's just really interesting. Oh my god, why did you rip it on me tonight? It's very like, have a guest and rip on Jen night. Uh, we didn't do this when Bob was here. That's no. Big, no. I don't know. It was, yeah, it's, we more, it's more fun when Bob was here. Emily knows more about me, that's why. Yes. Mary feels more comfortable with me than she does with Bob. That too. What? Okay, don't say that. Well, I would only <laughs> met Bob five oh. minutes before we started recording. Okay, now I've met Ovley many, many times. Okay, now I get it. We go way back. Yeah. You do. Yeah. yeah. See, this is your nepotism then, not mine. <laughs> nepotism doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> also, we're not related, so I'm not sure it counts as nepotism. It still works, isn't it? Right. Nepotism doesn't exist, Ovley. It doesn't exist. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get the. This is a no nepotism zone. <laughs> That's why we interview all our friends. Uh -huh. <laughs> also, because nobody else has offered to inter be interviewed by us. I know all the authors. I know a lot of them too. It's just timing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting them to come out here. But yes, and once again, plugging for that. That if you uh, if you have a book and you want to talk to us. Mary likes ebooks and audiobooks. I do. I will read anything, but I'm actually not a fan of audiobooks. <laughs> I can't focus. That's why I don't do as many podcasts. I don't commute. Oh yeah. So I don't have anything to listen. I should have I should have listened to your podcast in the car on the way here. I always underestimate how rush hour is going to affect me. Because I don't commute. Because you don't commute. Our yes. podcasts are only like 30 minutes long. They're perfect for a, for a drive. They're more than 30 minutes long sometimes. Not always. <laughs> this one will be. Yeah, we, yeah. Of course, I'm probably going to cut out a lot of us <laughs> snarking yeah, on Jen. No, they're the best part. To. I know, that's like the best part. I'm okay with being snarked on. It, it, apparently, the episodes where I'm really ranty and get snarked on are pretty good anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> All of our high ranking episodes are ones that we've ripped a book apart. <laughs> <laughs> Verbally, not physically. Uh, feeding the mermaids and the guests. Yes. <laughs> no, you, we haven't had a lot of guests yet. Even, even when this airs, we won't have had yeah, a lot yeah, of guests. Yeah, number two. Yeah. Woohoo! Yay! And that's only because, you know, Bob wrote a book with me. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so he gets top billing. There's yeah. a ring. There's we were promoting their book and now we're promoting yours. <laughs> yeah. To our, to our three listeners. <laughs> yes. To our th we have more than three. We've got 20 subscribers. We do. Ooh. Three subscribers. Yeah. Okay, but to be fair, I'm one of those, and I haven't listened to That's it, okay. So. We need 100 subscribers <laughs> to personalize our YouTube channel, so you don't have to listen. Just follow us on yes, YouTube. Yes, yes. And now we're plugging ourselves. Yes. Well, that's what I, this is about. I really appreciate that you're encouraging the people who actually are listening 
to not listen, just follow. <laughs> if they got this far, they're already listening, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's already too late. I have very small goals. <laughs> <laughs> we are, yes, yes, we have small goals. Oh my gosh. So is there anything that, like, if you had, I don't know, unlimited budget, who would you hire to do your covers? If, if I had, like, you don't know their name, you'd be if, like, I if, saw this cover. If I had unlimited budget, I would hire Kirk for everything ever. Oh, Because oh. I think he's fantastic. And he's and a I'm good like choice. Wow. He's yeah. like a very good artist. Way to go, Kirk. Like, that's that's pretty cool that you're happy with. And he, is he, like, your, is he your first? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> I fangirled so hard the first time I met him. It was embarrassing. Oh wow! It was it was bad. I was like, Oh my god, you're Kirk Dupont! You're so cool! I love my work. Hey, what's up? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> was, was this before he was actually doing your art? Before, yeah, before he did my covers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. And you met yes. and you fell in love with his artwork. Yes. And and it just. Perfect, and now you're probably going for somebody cheaper. <laughs> Is that like the author's version of like a midlife crisis? You get the younger, cheaper. Oh, I've got midlife crises in every single area of my life. It's sad. <laughs> All the crises. All the crises. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So, so Kirk is good, and it is it because <clears throat> you mentioned communication. So, like that's to me, we talk a lot about what the covers look like, the end result. But it, have you worked with anybody that's a, it was an absolute struggle, or did you like? I haven't really worked with anybody that was a struggle because um, I've only had Kirk and then Evan who did my swimmer cover, um, and I hired Evan in the first place because of his good communication. Right. So. Um, and then Kirk, I already knew, so there was obviously that level of rapport right. there. And you, you self-publish? Yes. So you've also now been in a position where you have a publisher choosing your covers for you. I have not been in that position. Are you happy about that? Is that something, do you like having that freedom of choosing yes. your own covers? Or? Very happy. Like, I, I weighed a lot <clears throat> of decisions before I decided to go indie, and that was one of them. And being able to have artistic control over all the things was important to me so seems to be kind of also what we've been hearing a lot of is that's a huge advantage of going indie and going self-publishing is that you have that control right which can you imagine if you had published these and like you wouldn't have gotten this great cover art you just gotten whatever <laughs> they decide to give you and a lot of especially small press publishers seem mm -hmm. to go really really cheap with their with the the cover design. I think you see a lot of that with like the really cheap indie sci-fi, a lot of cheap indie kind of romance covers. It's very yeah. much like, it's very obvious that we pulled this stock photo and put it in front of this stock photo and there's your cover. Totally mm -hmm. not talking about hot bed. No. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and like the quality of the artwork you have on your books is far superior to that. Thank you. That was one of my goals. Well, and that's one of the things that when I decided to go indie, <clears throat> I didn't want it to look like I went indie. There's definitely a stigma to independently published books because there is so much upfront cost involved in indie publishing, and it's hard. And some people are just like, well, I just want to get it out there. And that's fine, but I didn't want it to look like a half-assed attempt to put something out. Right. I wanted it to be professional quality. And it was worth the investment to pay for a really stunning cover design because I feel like it accomplishes what it wants, what I wanted it to. It, it looks professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and again, like that's, that's what a lot of people miss is that the stigma is not so much about the self-publishing industry and the authors, it's the corner cutters. Right. And the people who just shove things out and it's like, yeah, you're making us look bad. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I, you know, my day job is editing, and I had a client one time that it, I wasn't even editing his book. He was just trying to figure out why he wasn't selling a lot of copies, and there were many reasons for that. Um, but, so I did like a read and review and gave him like a summary of, you know, here's how I think you could really elevate this story. 
but one of them was the cover. It did not match the story at all. Like, oh. the, the, the character on the front, I wasn't even entirely sure who it was supposed to be when I read the book. Wow. Um, Although we've had this happen <clears> with, <throat> like, stuff that's actually legit big-time published. Yeah, but they're not big-time sellers. We read a lot of weird little crap we find on shelves. We don't read a lot of, you it know... It got in the library. Somebody knew about but, it. But the thing is, getting the library a little behind the scenes, getting the library doesn't necessarily mean that you've written a good book. It means that you're available through a vendor. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of these, these covers we see that look like they're, they are very corner-cutting kinds of covers, and yeah, they get published, and yeah, they get put on a shelf... But when you actually read them, which is what we've discovered, the books are not anything like what they slap on top of these books. Mm. The actual content of the books is not does not. The match characters the cover. don't look like the people in the cover. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I know you know you're not you're not supposed to judge a book, but the thing is, everybody so does. Everyone does not only that, but your your cover is an advertisement for your book. Mm-hmm. Right. So if what you're advertising is something completely different than your actual book, people are going to pick it up and go, "What is this?" and put it back down. Mm-hmm. They're not going to finish it because your your you know your character on the cover isn't anything like the character in the book. Right. Right, it it didn't match, and it didn't it didn't tell anything about what the book was actually about. So it was confusing. Like it had some elements from the book that once I got into the book, I recognized. Oh, that's what that's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. But there was no way to tell genre or like plot line or who the character was from the cover, and that makes it hard to sell when people don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. You'd be very good at this podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm here with you guys this time, but maybe not ever again. Not going to replace Jen. <gasps> oh my gosh! It is Rip Jen Hard Day! Dang! <laughs> it's because she's prettier than me, isn't it? No, Jen. You're Are you beautiful. sure she's not prettier than you're, you? You're my favorite, Jen. You're my, you're my best girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your first, Mary! Yikes. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> On podcast. Mm-hmm. That's that's what mm-hmm. we meant by that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> We're gonna get derailed again. <laughs> this is what this is all about. <laughs> See, you should have listened before. You're like, I'm coming in to do a professional <laughs> podcast with professional podcast people. That's no, our work. job is no, to I know you really well. That. <laughs> well, maybe one of these days we will have you back to rail on someone else's book. Would that be more fun? For that you? would be awesome. Okay, you, that's what no, I'm saying. I'm, no, no, do that. Way too nice, though. I will we'll give you something. We, see, see, <laughs> we try, uh, we try to be nice to authors, especially when we pick some of these weird little books, because we know that part's hard. We're not always really nice, and we are also way less nice to covers <laughs> than we are to books. So usually, usually the way it works is we either love the cover and love the book. Or we love the book and we hate the cover and we hate the publisher for what it and did. And often, <laughs> often we hate both the cover and the book. I think it hasn't happened, it's happened a, a few times. Um, hated Pumpkin Man. It was okay. Didn't hate it. Yeah, but we. Didn't. You knew you got ten pages into Ball Peen Hammer, so. You know. <laughs> okay, but see, you're like. Well, I know because you showed me the cover. <laughs> see, like, can you? Even how many pages into that? Like, I got that far in. <laughs> Little fingers. <laughs> get that far in. <laughs> Before I realized this was a bad oh, life choice. Oh, Lordy. Bad oh, life choice, Jen. Bad, bad life, life choice. <laughs> Bulking hammer was bad life choice. We're still ragging that. So, so next time you're here, we'll, we'll have you we'll have you read something else with a, with a, with a cover you enjoy to talk about. That could be fun, actually. <laughs> that could be fun, like... That could be fun. To... Have authors come on and like do this like a battle artists. royale of authors. Like I read your book and you read my book. Oh god, we don't need bloodshed. <laughs> I only have one mic <laughs> and I have a rubber chicken. <laughs> All right, I think we need to wrap up because Jen's gonna hit someone with a chicken. Before we do though, we often like to recommend a thing that we enjoy because we talk about lots of things on here that we do not enjoy. Would you like to recommend anything that you enjoy? A book. A book or a, book. Or a TV or a movie or something you're currently enjoying that you would like to recommend? Um, can I jump on the nepotism train and yes. support my friends? There you yes. go. Okay. All right. So my in my writer's group, I have 
three fabulous women that encourage me and help me and read my stuff and do all the things that I need and they are fantastic authors so I want to recommend S.D. Grimm, Lindsay Franklin, and Catherine Jones Payne. S.D. Grimm has fantasy and um, I've mostly read her fantasy but she has some like contemporary fantasy and some Possibly portal fantasy. I'm not even sure what all she has because I haven't read all of it. But her last name is Grimm. I know. Isn't that, that the like kind of thing ever? Right there. I mean, it's almost as good as Dumas. Almost. I mean, I don't know anything anybody with that last name. But <laughs> if they did, they would probably be a fantastic author. Fantastic. Fantastic. Brilliant. Brilliant. Generations of awesome. <laughs> all right, and the others um, right. The, uh, Lindsay Franklin writes fantasy. Um, she had super, super fun young adult fantasy series called The Weaver Trilogy. And it's one of the best magic systems I've seen, or most unique. It's super fun. And Catherine Jones Payne has a mermaid series out. Actually, her covers were one of the ones that were oh, was cool. Kirk's covers. Um, so do you share Kirk? We do. Kirk, Kirk gets around, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Kirk, Kirk <laughs> does all the covers. Because you didn't think if we had Avli on here, there would be innuendos. I mean, come on. I knew that. <laughs> I thought there would be more, actually. Um, no. <laughs> She's being professional. <laughs> Kirk, Kirk contracts with, like, major publishers and does indie because he loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, That's cool. It is cool. But he he's... Uh, he did, he did Lindsay's covers, and I think he's done... Oh, yeah. Actually, one of S.D. Grimm's covers is the one that's in that video on his website. Mm. So, oh, cool. so that's a lot of fun. And Catherine Jones Payne has a young adult mermaid series out, and she has a young adult series. The first one is out. It's called Fire Dancer, and it's elemental magic. Mm. So, A lot of fantasy authors. Yes. That's how we do. We like that around here. This is true. We will link. We will link things. We yeah, will link all, and the, all links. the links. So, so the way nepotism all also works is if there's a there's a turnaround with this too. Tell them to come on our podcast. Okay. Yeah. Actually, they probably would. See? They're all out. Of, they're, none of them are local, so they oh. have to be like. We haven't quite like, figured out remote yet. Yeah, they'll come visit me though. Okay. When they come visit me, we'll hook up. All right, then we can have the Raider Battle Royale. <laughs> will it be a Battle Royale or will it be like an author orgy? I'm pretty sure it'll be, yeah, this, this is a love fest going on. Yeah, this is going to be like, oh, I love this, I love that. Um, we love that, yes. Yes. <laughs> we do love that because we like supporting other authors, especially local people. Mm-hmm. And in not local people, too, that's okay. It's okay that you're not local. It's we will okay. still support you. We will still support you. Okay. It's all right. It's just harder for us because we're not that smart yet with the tech. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have big budget studio stuff. But if you out. happen to come to conventions that we're also at, then you know. <laughs> oh yeah. And on that note, thank you, Amelie, for joining us. Do you want to plug your websites? How to get a hold of your books? How to get a hold of you? Yes, my website is my name. AvaliJerome.com, so www.AvaliJerome, A-V-I-L-Y-J-E-R-O-M-E.com. Um, and all my books are on Amazon. There you go. Go buy them. Go buy, buy the books. Buy them all. They're all amazing. the books. They're very, very good. And also read them. But, but, but buy them. <laughs> the very buy least. one for everybody you've ever met. <laughs> Just like subscribe to us. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh my gosh. Oh Bye. God, now. Bye. Bye. I like how we're waving to the audience that can't see us. Bye. <laughs> Don't give us away. <laughs> Thank you so much for cracking another case with Mary and Jen. To learn more about Casing the Cover, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Casing the Cover. To contact us or suggest a book, email casingthecoverpod at gmail.com. New episodes of Casing the Cover release the second and fourth Tuesday on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher.